Now I'm going to switch over to a sample file, one that already has payroll already set up. Uh, that way we can just work off the sample file, which anyone um, with a QuickBooks desktop installed can open up a sample file and play with payroll without having to have a payroll subscription. So that's something I strongly encourage that you play with the sample file uh, first before you know setting up a payroll if you're just sort of in the in a testing basis. So I got this QuickBooks file open here and this one has payroll enabled. And the way you know uh, that payroll is enabled is when you click on the employees menu, you're gonna see a whole bunch of options here. So when, it, when um, payroll is not enabled, you only see about four or five options. But when this is enabled, everything, all the basically all the options of payroll will be there. If I go into my employee center uh, here from the employees menu, employee center, I'm going to see a tab here called payroll. That's sort of another indication that payroll is enabled or I have an active payroll subscription. And then all the information about your payroll subscription can be seen here on this corner. It will tell you what your subscription number is, when it expires, and what version of payroll you have. Now, inside of this payroll tab, once your payroll is completely configured, everything is going to be in here. When you first set up payroll, it will take you through a payroll setup process, but you can create the setup yourself by clicking on the employees menu and clicking on payroll setup. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to go through the setup uh, wizard uh, step by step. Okay. So the first one says introduction and it gives you a link uh, to click on a payroll setup checklist. That's actually really useful. It's a PDF file you can use to kind of go step by step and it guides you through what you need to have before you set up payroll. You know, things like all your employees W-4s that contains their, um, their withholding elements from tax purposes, uh, everybody's pay rate, accumulated sick hours, direct deposit information, how much to get paid. It's a great checklist to have. Strongly recommend that you do that for setting up payroll for the first time. Then as we go through the options here, first option is going to ask you about compensation. So go ahead and set up all your compensation items. So when we click on add new, we can set up a compensation item like a salary. Okay. And then we just hit a checkbox there for salary. And then we can also set up hourly and we can also set up a bonus. So we'll do one of each and we'll hit next. So this one is the hourly compensation. It says, what do you want to call it? So let's call it hourly staff. Then it says, uh, what's the time and a half procedure for this one? It's a double time, time and a half. So I can select here. No, it's not time and a half. It's only double time or maybe no, it's not double time. It's only time and a half. And then uh, QuickBooks will create uh, those uh, payroll items for you. And those are going to be really important for uh, setting up payroll for each employee. And then it says uh, next uh, payroll item is salary. You know, does, does a salary employee get time and a half or double time? We can say no. And then we can put here salary office or something like that. And then we'll hit finish. And then it creates all of my um, hourly uh, hourly salary, all the components. It even created one called bonus. And as you can see in the sample file, there's a couple of other in here. So when we go to continue, then it goes through employee benefits. So this is where you set up all the employee benefits. So the first one is insurance. So if I click on add new, then it's going to ask me what type of insurance. And then here you can choose, let's say it's dental, health, and let's also say that they got group term. And what's nice about this is these, all these have a little button there called explain. And that will actually explain maybe some of the tax elements behind making those decisions on whether or not those uh, are deductible, not deductible, that sort of thing. So when we hit next, it will ask you questions like, you know, who's paying for the health insurance, uh, company only, employee only, or both. Um, and then it's asking you, you know, is this considered to be a section 125 uh, insurance, which basically means that it's pre-tax or is it all after tax, uh, that sort of thing. Obviously consult your tax person about that and so forth. Okay, so you just go to the setup, it tells you who you're paying insurance to. So let's say this is um, Aetna. I'll put the account number and then I'll put in, we'll pay this monthly one uh, day, the first day of the month before the previous liabilities. Then we'll hit next. 
and QuickBooks will set all this stuff up for you for you and it'll walk you through the setup like dental you know we can put here uh, Delta Dental put the account number for our dental account and let's say we pay that uh, annually and then we'll hit next and then let's say we got group term life so I can put here uh, met life and let's say we pay that annually also and hit finish so QuickBooks will set up all those uh, uh, compensation items for us to break them down on the paychecks and we got all sorts of other things like retirement benefits 401k things like that vacation time salary time and miscellaneous things like mileage reimbursement uh, employee advances you know some could be taxable some not that's all through uh, the wizard so it's really good to just go through it step by step now you can also set up your employees and you can create the employees through here you can also employ them through uh, set them up through the employee menu they don't have to you don't have to do them through here but what's nice is that it'll uh, walk you through what you need to record and what is required in order to process payroll you know you, the address needs to be there social security number needs to be there and so forth so um, quickbooks will walk you through what's needed then the taxes themselves so let's spend some time here on the taxes portion um, because that's the part that most people get really confused in uh, by default because uh, QuickBooks payroll subscription is connected to the internet and is always downloading uh, the new rates and things like that you don't have to necessarily worry about whether there's a tax law change and you have to go into QuickBooks and change that but uh, the most important most common federal tax uh, uh, taxes right that are going to be uh, deducted from the paychecks and accumulated those are going to be all automatically created for you and most of them you don't have to mess with the rates like for example medicare and uh, social security are all preset here and if i click on any of them um it will ask me questions like you know which account would you like to uh, put this in so where in your chart of accounts you like to put this in uh, whether it's the expense side or the liability side, right? So that's what these questions are for. Um, and But you really don't have to change the rates because these are all tied to the rates of the federal government and that's all tied into QuickBooks. The only possible rate when it comes to federal taxes that you may have to change is the federal unemployment rate and then we'll go into the other screen to change the rates. But for the federal part, you don't have to mess with it mostly. State is a different story because uh, you may be doing business in one state or multiple states. So you may have to come in here and create each of the taxes for a different state, depending on which states you do business with or technically which states you have employees in. And again, you don't have to know the laws of the states per se. Uh, QuickBooks will actually walk you through it. If you select the state, every single state set of taxes will be loaded. The minute you choose, yeah, that state is there. So this is asking me for my unemployment tax rate. So I'll put here 2.7%, hit finish, and then uh, QuickBooks will create that for me. So there's, there isn't that much extra work that you have to do. You just have to make sure you let it know uh, where you have employees so QuickBooks can create all those uh, state taxes as well. Now, <clears throat> scheduling payments, it's really important to tell QuickBooks how often do you have to pay them who you're going to pay them to and what tax id or you know reference number employer account number whatever they call it in your state um, has to be entered in there in order for those forms to be processed so you most of the times you may have to consult your tax person if you don't know um, but quickbooks will walk you through it and i'll give you the different choices like for example in california you can only file this quarterly it doesn't give you a different choice okay uh, but in florida it's actually for the same thing you can only file quarterly it gives you that choice um and, and that's it there, there may be some states in which you can file these things monthly I actually don't know if there is one but uh for example this 941 form which is the federal form that one uh depending on on the employer every employer may have a different payroll schedule your payroll schedule may be annually maybe quarterly maybe monthly or uh, semi-weekly. Now we're not talking about in this area how often you pay uh, your paychecks. This is how often you're obligated to pay the government. And if you click on this more button here, 
it will take you to some um, help pages. And if you want to know more about this, you, you definitely may want to click on these links, which will take you to the IRS website and the Intuit website, guiding you and giving you some of those guidelines for you to choose what is what. But assuming you know for a fact that you're supposed to pay your 941 forms uh, semi-weekly, then we'll pick here semi-weekly and then click finish. So that's in a nutshell uh, how to set up or, or what you do when you set up the payroll taxes through, um, through the QuickBooks payroll setup. Um, and then the next option it will ask you is, let's assume, for example, that we started QuickBooks payroll in the middle of the year and we had employees in the middle, uh, in the first half of the year, and we were using some sort of other payroll system or doing it manually through a spreadsheet, whatever, then you have to come in here and enter uh, the historical paycheck information of each employee. So if you had any employee that was actually uh, paid any paychecks during the year outside of QuickBooks, in order for QuickBooks to give you an appropriate W-2 for the entire year worth of payroll, you're gonna have to come in here and basically type or transcribe all other paychecks given to employees before you set up a QuickBooks payroll and hit done there. And that's how QuickBooks will know that that uh, that accumulated payroll is now going to match um, in the year to date information, the W-2 information, that sort of thing. And then we'll hit continue and go to payroll set center. And that is you know, sort of the easy way to set up uh, payroll at the beginning. Now, once you're sort of more versed or more advanced with, uh, with payroll, then you can set up your employees through the employee center by just right clicking and clicking on new employee and then going through setting up their information there. And then down here where it says payroll info, this is where actually I'm going to give that employee their rate. So let's say this person gets paid hourly and their hourly rate is, let's say $35 an hour. And then I can come in here and look for the overtime. And overtime is automatically, QuickBooks knows to just multiply that times one and a half. Um, and then we can put here all the deductions, benefits. So if they have health insurance, we can put here that, you know, their portion of the health insurance, let's say it's negative 125. So just put 125, it, it knows it's negative automatically. And then let's say they also get a mileage reimbursement every once in a while, but I'll leave it blank that way in every uh, paycheck, it will be different. So this is how we set up um, the employees uh, pay information and tax information. If you click on this button up here where it says taxes, this is where we put their W-4 information, which is whether they're single or married, and how many allowances they have. And this is how QuickBooks automatically calculates what the federal withholding is based on that information that you will transcribe from the W-4 that the employee will give you. And then you choose here which state uh, they're in, whether it's Florida or California, and QuickBooks will make all those calculations for you in terms of um, you know, local state taxes and things like that. And then there are some cases where you have uh, county taxes or just sort of non-standard taxes with um, with payroll and you can create your own sort of other taxes in here, user-defined taxes through this other screen. So that's in a nutshell how you set up each individual employee's uh, payroll information manually through the employee center. Now up here on the left, you see where it says payroll frequency. This is really, really important because um, in many cases, you will have employees that get paid monthly, weekly, semi-weekly, all in the same company. And in order to organize each of these uh, payroll cycles, we use payroll schedules. So let's say we pay this person weekly. So I'll create a new payroll schedule here called weekly staff. And then I'll set it to weekly and I'll say the payroll end date um, or the next coming payroll is this date and the date that it should appear is this date and QuickBooks will pretty much um, set up your payroll schedule to be programmed so when you run payroll the next payroll date will be based on these dates that we put here and then we'll hit OK and let me go ahead and put some information for this employee so we can use some um, as an example here I'll hit OK 
Okay, perfect, there we go. So there's my new employee, which I set up manually through the employee center, not through the setup again, as we did it earlier through the setup using the employees payroll setup button, but almost everything that can be set up through payroll uh, can be done through the employee center uh, straight from here. Now let's talk about briefly setting up employees um, sick and vacation time. Um, in that because that that is part of the QuickBooks certified user test. So we'll go over those uh, quickly and then we'll run some payroll. Okay, so let's say for this employee, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on him and click edit. And then I'm gonna go into uh, payroll info and then I'm gonna click on sick and vacation. So let's say that we're setting up this payroll for the first time and this employee does have some payroll accumulated for the year, some uh, sick time, sorry, accumulated for the year. So uh, let's say that for sick time, they have eight hours accumulated. So basically we just type eight hours and we can leave that blank. Or let's say they have a, they get a total of uh, 24 hours, but they already used, um, in this case, uh, 12. And then uh, the, the rest that we'll have available. So you can either just put the net uh, whether it's just 12 there, you know, whether the net is 12 and then zero use for the year, or we can just put that the entire amount available was 24 and then maybe they had, let's say, 16 use for the year. That way they'll have a net of eight. Then it says, how often does sick time accumulate? So we can put every year uh, people accumulate a total of 24 hours of sick. Okay. Maximum number of hours is how many can accrue uh, if this is weekly or per paycheck. In this case, we can just put the same 24 here because that's the total amount of hours that they have. And then if these hours um, pass through the next year, then we don't hit this little checkbox, right? So if somebody doesn't use them one year and then they're going to uh, use them the next year, then we don't hit this checkbox. But if you do want that to reset, then we hit that checkbox. Then it says, you know, when does this reset? When does the year start? And when do people start accumulating um, as of? So normally we put their 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 start date, their employees employment start date, and that sort of thing will help. Now vacation time, same story. So let's say for example, everybody gets eighty hours of vacation um, per year, and the hours used for the year. Let's say this person already used forty, and then their accrual period let's say it's at the beginning of the year and then every person accrues 80 hours with a maximum number of hours of 160 because if they don't use their hours they're allowed to roll over let's say up to 80 hours to have a maximum of 160 and then we won't hit uh, reset so it's a kind of different policies uh you can you, you can use here so i'll go ahead and hit okay and then this employee has all their sick time uh, set up so when, when uh, we actually are going to use their sick time, uh, you notice how those numbers start moving. Now here where it says earnings, um, here's where we can set up uh, people's uh, sick time. So for example, there's my sick hourly, and then there is my uh, vacation hourly. And what people get paid while they're sick is basically going to be the same rate um, as the hourly. Right? So we, it's important to set up for every single employee their standard hourly, their overtime hourly, sick hourly, and vacation hourly. Some companies have a policy where they'll pay a different rate for sick and vacation, but that's not a uh, common practice. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. So now I got my employees set up. I got their payroll schedules. I got their vacation time. I got their year to dates. I got the rates. Now we can run payroll. So I'm going to go ahead and click on payroll here. And then this drop down allows me uh, to choose. Uh, among uh, different payroll schedules. In this particular case, we only have one payroll schedule called weekly staff in which only one of our employees was set up for. So when I click on this weekly schedule, only that one employee I set up on weekly will show up in there. So although I have one, two, three, four, five employees there, I can actually select each employee and put each employee on a monthly so I'm going to create here a monthly schedule and you kind of, you're going to see the dynamic of that. So let's do monthly and they said, they said that's today. 
you know, here, okay? So let's say this is the monthly one, and then I'll go ahead and add every one of my employees into that monthly schedule. Get monthly, and next employee, there it is, monthly, and then the last person, monthly, perfect. Okay, so I only got this one person, Hector Garcia here, as my weekly. So when I go into payroll, I'm going to see uh, two upcoming schedules that tells you when they're supposed to be paid next, what's the check date, and what's the period involved, depending on how often they get paid. So let's just do that one uh, weekly employee and then click on start scheduled payroll. And then you're going to see um, Hector will show up here. And then I can click on open paycheck detail and enter information uh, manually if I want to. If I hit cancel and I don't click on open paycheck detail before I create a paycheck, I can on the same screen put, okay, Hector worked uh, 40 hours standard. He worked six hours extra, no sick, no vacation. And, um, and that's gonna be the paycheck. So when I click back on open paycheck detail, you're gonna see the breakdown on how this paycheck is um, uh, constructed. You're going to see based on the number of uh, hours and the rate, and it's going to calculate down here exactly what their paycheck is going to be, uh, gross, net, everything's calculated here. And at the end, you're going to see the, the net check amount here all the way in the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. And then I'm going to click on uh, continue. And then I'm going to get a summary of all my paychecks across all of my employees. If direct deposit is turned on, you would see that little checkbox there. This is a sample file, so I can't do direct deposit with a sample file, but if that's turned on, then you will go to create paychecks. And through direct deposit, you would have to put a password to actually submit it to Intuit for processing. But if this is just a paper check situation, at this point, you can just print the paycheck. Okay, you would just hit okay, and you can print the paychecks from here or you can print the pay stubs, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then the pay stubs look just like this, right? So you can print the paycheck and print the pay stub separately, or uh, just give the paycheck that has the stubs in the bottom uh, because there's different options or different checks uh, you can print. I recommend having the checks with the stubs on it, that way you don't have to print uh, two things. So I'll go ahead and hit uh, close. I'll hit close and hit close. Okay, let's talk about um, how to uh, pay the payroll liabilities and why. Uh, yeah. It's so always important to know why you're supposed to pay the payroll liabilities, obviously because you don't wanna be in trouble with the government and not have uh, late payments and late filing penalties and things like that. But why is, is it particularly important to pay it through QuickBooks? So once we actually uh, create our paychecks or pay via direct deposit, QuickBooks will accumulate uh, my payroll liabilities. And before we jump into payroll liabilities, um, into the actual payment function, let's go to the report section. So I'm gonna click on reports, and then I'm gonna click on employees, and then I'm gonna click on payroll liability balances. And then when I click on that, we're gonna get a report that's gonna tell us exactly what we owe in payroll liabilities uh, based on what government entity uh, we have accumulated up to. So for example, let's say I'm going to do uh, something for uh, today. And then, and this is going to tell me based on every single paycheck I created, how much I owe the government. So for example, um, according to this report, I owe the government just for federal withholding uh, $402. So if I double click on that $402, it will tell me every specific check, every, every single check that caused that liability uh, to go up. And as a matter of fact, notice that I had paid my liability at some point and I had taken that liability to zero. But then when I created some additional paychecks, uh, my liability went back, back up. So what's really nice about QuickBooks is it has very detailed reports, uh, check by check, what tax is being accumulated and when and what point. So in terms of just uh, going into great levels of detail, uh, QuickBooks is uh, great for that. Now, let me go ahead and go back into my uh, employees payroll center screen. And now I'm gonna click on pay liabilities. So QuickBooks also has a module, which is the one you're looking at here, 
which is called the pay liabilities module, which will keep track of every single tax uh, that you owe, uh, depending on when you have to pay it by and depending on who the government entity is or what, what form it has to do with. Now, every single payment I've made in the past is going to be recorded here under payment history. So if I'm making the payments electronically, which you can configure QuickBooks to do that, as long as you got your all your codes from the government to uh, put those in there, um, it's going to give me tracking numbers and things like that. But if you are paying uh, by hand in QuickBooks per se, let's call it that, which means that we are creating the, pay, the payment in QuickBooks and then maybe sending a check or creating the payment in QuickBooks and maybe logging into the IRS website or the EFTPS website to pay or logging into the state website to pay. Either whether we're paying outside of QuickBooks or inside QuickBooks, we still have to record the payment in QuickBooks no matter what. So all those payments will be recorded there. And if they have a check number associated with it, that would be there. Or if you're paying electronically, you can just put there electronic or something like that. And I'll show you that. So let's say, for example, that I got this payment that is due in two days, which is a 941 payment for $212.35. And if I click on that number, I can see you know, all the paychecks that accumulate to that number and basically how we got there, okay? And basically that was caused by the, that paycheck and maybe a few other paychecks I created uh, recently that caused us to accumulate to that. So if I just um, select that payment and click on view and pay, QuickBooks will create what looks like a check. Um, and then there's a little checkbox here for e-payment, which is if you have electronic payments turned on, uh, it will let you do that or uh, check. So if you're going to actually write a check to the government and pay through here, then you will select that check feature. But if you're not going to write a check and you're going to pay electronically through, let's say, the IRS's website, which is called EFTPS, I will uncheck this little checkbox that says to be printed. And then up here where it says number, I'll type EFTPS to just let me know that I actually went to the EFTPS website and I logged in and I processed the payment. But then I'm also telling QuickBooks that I paid it. That way I know accounting wise and I'm tracking the, the fact that I do, um, that, that I did pay it. That way I, I don't potentially pay it twice. So why pay your liabilities through QuickBooks if you're still paying them outside is to track it, to let you know what payments are due. Why pay them through QuickBooks um, if you're gonna write them a check uh, but obviously because you probably want to print the check through QuickBooks, so that would be a great module for doing that. And why do it also? Because we don't want our liabilities to, to be overstated. We want our accounting to be accurate. So whether we pay electronically through QuickBooks or pay electronically outside of QuickBooks or actually pay the government with a check, no matter what, we're still going to use this module to pay our liabilities. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close and that will record that liability paid. It will now permanently put that payment into my payments history. I can hit close and you will notice that no longer that liability is set up there. Now, one of the common questions I get is, how do I change uh, the payment method? Um, um, so I can click here and then click on manage payment method. And then through here is where I tell it, okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start paying this electronically and then you will uh, in here tell it that it will be paid electronically and as you go through the setup uh, you will have an opportunity to put that uh, electronic payment information which is not enabled on this file because this is the this one is the sample file but as long as we have all that stuff configured in there we can change it to be paid electronically instead of um, instead of manually okay so that's how we change the payment method the second most common question i get is how do I change the payroll frequency? So for example, I used to pay the IRS, the 941 payments uh, quarterly, and now I, I got a letter that says I have to pay it monthly. Um, so right here in the same place where I went to payment method, I would go, let's say, wait until that opens, go into schedule payments, go into 941, edit, and then hit the drop down here to change the actual frequency. So we can, you know, this is where we tell it, I'm gonna pay with a check electronically, or I'm gonna pay monthly, quarter, annually. That's all inside of that screen. So whether you use the, the long setup screen that I explained 
at the beginning or you use the, 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 the same payroll screen here and those little hidden buttons here, um, that's how you would do it, okay? All right, so that's how we pay the taxes. Now let's talk about filing the forms. So here next to pay liabilities, there's a tab here that says file forms. So every single time you go in, it will, it will tell you that it probably should download an update if there has been a federal or state a tax update. So you're gonna hit yes to the updates. That's really, really important. And then um, any form that's available to file, it would show up in here. So in a live file, you would have the actual active forms pertaining to the business uh, and which forms they have to file. Down here in the bottom where it says quick guides, it actually walks you uh, step by step how to file those forms. So let me just show you those guides. I'm gonna click on payroll tax forms and I'll just kind of cover the important things that you need to know um, about filing the form. So the first thing is, as I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, every active form that we can file, whether it's something that we're just gonna print or electronically file, is gonna show up here in the top portion. Things like the 941, the 940, which is FUTA, the Federal Unemployment, uh, W-2, State Unemployment, it's all gonna be up here in the top. So we select the form that we wanna use and then we click on uh, Create Form. Then the next uh, question we're gonna have is, what is the cycle, what's, what's the filing period? And by default, they'll choose sort of the last current quarter, but you can actually manually override it and just pick the end date of the quarter or year that you're going to file. Then the next one, the next couple of screens actually, is going to be a combination of a preview of the actual form and you can go through several pages and see what those pages look like. But the most important things you need to know is you must uh, review all the forms, make sure it all seems accurate and is complete. Click on check for errors and QuickBooks will automatically check for you where are the potential areas of errors. Uh, you can print your own forms for your records um, if you're not gonna e-file, uh, oh, sorry, if you're gonna e-file or you can just print it if you're gonna paper file and then right down here in the bottom right, you can uh, submit the form. Now let me go ahead and close that and show you the next document, which is this one called electronic filing. So this document actually walks you through step-by-step -step instructions for setting up your QuickBooks to file electronically. All you need to know, or the most important thing you need to know is um, you need to get a 10 digit pin through the IRS to be able to electronically file IRS payroll uh, tax returns, such as the 941 and the 940. So those are the two most important things you need to know. And then under W-2 filing, um, that's a little bit trickier because that's actually done through the Social Security Administration. So you don't really need um, special permissions or special pin numbers and stuff like that, like with the IRS. So you can actually just file them without any special um, action in your part. So here it walks you step by step to previewing the W-2s, uh, printing them, looking at the worksheets and stuff before you file them. So those are the three most important guides right here when it comes to information about filing the forms. And those, those concepts are pretty much the only thing you need to know about that. Okay, the last topic here is uh, track time and use it for payroll or for invoicing customers. So first of all, we have to turn on time tracking. So we're gonna click on the edit menu and go to preferences. And then we're gonna scroll all the way down in the left bar here of the options. Click on time and preferences and then click on company preferences. And then where it says, do you track time? I would hit no or hit yes. So I pick, you know, what's gonna be the answer. And then I put here what the next, uh, the first day of the week is. And then whether or not I want to mark all the time entries as billable. And I'll explain that in a second. So I'm going to uncheck that and then hit OK. And then I'm actually going to now create a timesheet for one of my employees. So I'm going to go into employees, enter time, use weekly timesheet. Now, by the way, if I happen to just be in the home page, like a lot of people, sort of start at the homepage. They can also click on enter time, use weekly timesheet. It's the same exact uh, way. So let me pick one of my employees here, Greg Schneider, and I'm gonna uh, track his timesheet. Now it looks like I already entered 
um, a few things here. But in order to create a timesheet um, for an employee that I'm gonna create in a paycheck, I will do all that through here. However, I'm gonna go into my employee section here under employees, employee center, and then I'm gonna right click on that employee and just make sure that I told QuickBooks to actually use timesheets for this employee for the purpose of creation of paychecks. So I'm gonna click on edit employee and then click on payroll info. And notice I hit that down here where it says use time data to create paychecks. If that's not checked, it's not gonna work. So I have to make sure that I actually hit that checkbox, use time data to create um, paychecks. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna go into employees, enter time, use weekly timesheet. I'm going to pick Greg Schneider. And then I'm gonna see a couple of options here. So the first thing is customer job. Now I could just delete that to have a blank. So the first one is if I want to assign that payroll to a particular customer job for internal cost purposes, just for information or for billable purposes, then I can enter it here. So let's say that um, in this particular customer, he spent eight hours on Monday and four hours on Tuesday. And we are going to hit the checkbox and I do want to charge my client for this employee's time. And what item am I going to charge him? You know, what item is going to go on the invoice when I charge him? Let's say it's going to be labor, for example. Now, for internal uh, payroll purposes, I have to tell it which payroll item within my payroll system it is. So I'm going to put here um, regular pay. And then workers comp, it's not covered in this um, in this video, but it's there if you want to also track workers comp. Now let's say um, on a different job on this one, he also worked, let's say four hours on Tuesday, seven hours on Wednesday and eight hours on Thursday, but we do not plan to charge our client for that because let's say it's part of a monthly contract or something like that. So we're not going to put a checkbox there for billable. I still have to put my payroll item no matter what, um, let's put regular pay. I don't have to put a service item because I'm not going to charge my client for it. And let's say that the rest of the time he worked in the office, so I'll put here seven hours here, and let's say four hours here. Now he's actually going into overtime, as you see down here, 42. So we have to be very careful to also track overtime separately. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, two hours here, that way he caps out at 40 and then I'll, and I'll put here regular pay and then I'll put one more line item here for overtime pay and I'll put two hours here. So that's, that's how we also track overtime pay. So it does get a little bit confusing with overtime. So there's a couple of moving parts here where we're tracking, we're creating a timesheet and we're putting the hours that each employee worked uh, each day. We're also set, uh, adding a customer job because we either want to know internally for job costing purposes, what these employees are costing us, or invoice our client, which is gonna be the case of only that first one where we hit this checkbox billable. And then the rest of the hours are not involved with any uh, customer job, so we're not even tracking that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit to save and close. And then I'll go ahead and create the paycheck firm. So I'll go to payroll, and then I'll start schedule payroll and then I'll hit uh, continue. And then you're gonna see uh, QuickBooks is gonna now create a new paycheck for this employee. And then here you see the 38 hours. And then I'm gonna click on open paycheck detail. And I can actually see uh, that information uh, get uh, transcribed in here. Now, let me go into the actual employee that we're working on, which is Greg Schneider. And then we see what this uh, paycheck looks like. So we see, look, 12 hours on one job, 10 hours on another job, and so forth. Now, this is uh, grabbing information from possibly a different pay period, that's why it looks a little bit different, but uh, it's basically the same concept, right? So it grabs the information from the timesheet um, and it brings it in here, and it basically accumulates and it creates the paycheck. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and close. And then let me uncheck these two and I'll just create that one paycheck for Greg Schneider. And then I'll hit continue and create the paycheck. 
And now let's take a look at using those billable times to invoice our clients. So here on the reports, employees and payroll, actually not employees or payroll, under jobs estimates, jobs time and mileage, uh, we're gonna go into unbilled cost by job and we'll hit that checkbox. And basically it will tell me that for you know this customer, there are $1.97 on build, which is, I guess, that person's time. Um, and then we have here on this side, for Alan Robert, we have this much time on build that has to also do with their time and then all the other jobs that uh, have on build labor. So when I actually go create an invoice for a customer, so I'm gonna go here to the homepage and then go to create invoice. And then I'll pick one of those customers that had accumulated time before. So I'll click this customer, oh, actually it was this one. And then I'll close out of this. And then this window here says, your customer job has um, on build time and cost. Would you like to use them? Then I'll hit okay. And then we're gonna see expenses, mileage items and time. And these two here, which is the eight hours from the Monday and then four hours on Tuesday are now transcribed in here, letting me know that now I have to charge my client for these 12 hours. So when I hit okay, we're gonna see the 12 hours get added into the invoice. And then at this point I can give it whatever rate is that we charge and then use my timesheet to invoice clients. All right, that, that's actually um, all of the concepts from QuickBooks uh, Certified User Test uh, Part 7 Payroll. Let's talk about the, some of our uh, sample questions that you may see on the exam. So sample question number one is, when printing paychecks, what is the preferred check style to give an employee uh, a pay stub? Okay, so there's a couple here. We have standard, wallet, payroll, and voucher. So I went to Google here and I searched for voucher check. And the voucher check is the check that it's the whole sheet is an eight and a half by 11 sheet. It, um, it has the check in the top and then it has two pay stubs, uh, one that it's kept for the employer and one that's kept for the employee. So the options here are standard wallet, payroll and voucher. The answer, the right answer is uh, voucher. Voucher check is the preferred check style to give an employee because it comes with a pay stub, okay? Next question, when setting up a new employee, what is important about the payroll info tab? So A, whatever you enter and see in this window affects each paycheck unless you change the information on the paycheck itself. That sounds about right. Let's look at the other options. It identifies the state subject to withholding and the state where the employee leaves, lives. Huh. That one, that's, that one doesn't sound completely wrong, but let's look at the other options. You enter emergency contact info, which is required, but uh, that one doesn't sound right at all. And this tab tracks employees, age, gender. Okay, let's actually go into QuickBooks and see what this tab looks like. So I'll click on employee, employee center. I'll right click on an employee and click on edit employee. And there's several tabs here. So we have personal info, which is where we put name and address and social security. So that's the personal tab. Then we have address and contact and emergency info, which is under the address and contact tab. So look at some of these answers are kind of tricky. The information is in here, but it's in a different tab. Then we got the additional info tab, which has got some additional information and then the payroll info tab. So the question is specifically asking about the payroll info tab. Okay, so in QuickBooks, the payroll info tab contains all of the earnings information uh, that are going to be uh, fixed here unless we change it on a paycheck. That's what the question says. It says, unless we change it on a paycheck. So let's just make sure that that's correct. So I think that it's answer A, but let me go into a paycheck itself and try to edit and looks, yep, it looks like we can change information um, it, it, that's you know previously set on the payroll info but it, it looks like we can change it on the fly in here 
uh, no problem. So that's that answer just seems to be the right answer. So it's, it's the answer is A. Whatever you see here affects the paycheck unless you change it on the paycheck itself. All right.